FantasyFootballFix.com has over 20 unique tools and the most advanced FPL mobile app available. Build team value with the price change predictor tool and never be priced out of a transfer again. Improve your rank with algorithms to identify transfers to maximize points. Learn from the best in the game by following the Elite 11 team reveal. Win mini leagues by tracking opponents and predicting their transfers. Upload your FPL squad for free at fantasyfootballfix.com. Welcome back to another team selection after what was a low scoring game at 15. 43 points have seen a second successive red arrow, down to 78k. Alexander Arnold got the only points at the back after Liverpool restricted Wolves to an expected goals figure of 0.12, the lowest recorded by any side during the game week. And no defender could better his four attempted assists. Ivan Tony's absence saw Tino Livramento make his way into the 11 after Brighton scored a 98th minute equaliser to deny him the clean sheet. While Chelsea failed to keep on for a third match running after another mix up between Jorginho and Mendy gave West Ham a route back into the game. Diogo Jota really should have opened the scoring for Liverpool long before Divock Origi did, when his effort from six yards out was blocked on the line by Connor Cody, with the goalkeeper stranded. Only Sterling and Grealish could better his 0.77 expected goals figure amongst midfielders in game week 15, with that one big chance alone accounting for 0.68 of that. The other three midfielders were amongst the points, with Brian Mbomo finally putting an end to his six-match spell without a return. Salah and Rafinha along with Mbomo each created one big chance. But sadly there was no parting gift from Harry Kane, despite his five attempts at goal, a tally only matched by Cristiano Ronaldo amongst forwards during the game week. The best of those chances saw him through on goal with an opportunity to lob Norwich goalkeeper Tim Krul, who was well off his line, but the effort landed just wide of the target. So let's move on to the transfer plans ahead of a Friday evening deadline for game week 16. There's 1.7 million in the bank and two free transfers available but there are three moves I'd like to make, so it's a case of deciding which two transfers to prioritise this game week. The plans haven't changed too much since the previous video, though Ivan Tony's likely absence is an additional problem. The Athletic are reporting that he could miss the next two matches against Watford and Man United. Mikel Antonio remains the most likely replacement, with the hope that West Ham's improved fixtures can help reawaken his form. But Ollie Watkins is an alternative option. Rafinha is another player on the chopping block, ahead of away ties with Chelsea, Man City and Liverpool in the next four game weeks. It would be great to upgrade him to a Man City midfielder, Bernardo Silva or Phil Foden, but opting instead for Jared Bowen works better within the current structure. That would then leave enough money in the bank to also upgrade Tony to Antonio, whether that happens this game week or next. Finally, the move that I'm almost certain to make will see Harry Kane making way after failing to score in three successive home matches against Leeds, Brentford and Norwich. He's done very little to tempt me into keeping him longer than planned and provides an easy route to Cristiano Ronaldo ahead of his favourable running. So Kane and Rafinha to Ronaldo and Bowen are the two transfers I'm most likely to make, on the basis that whoever I keep out of Tony and Rafinha will move to the bench anyway. It does make the squad thinner for game week 16, but Bowen has outperformed Antonio in recent weeks and for me is the bigger priority to bring in. It also provides an extra week to decide between Antonio and Watkins as Tony's replacement. So with all that in mind, here's how the team is set to line up for game week 16. Arsenal have conceded 9 goals in the last 4 game weeks, with only Watford faring worse, but there has been a drastic difference in their home and away form. Across each team's respective last four home matches, the Gunners have shipped just three goals, with only Wolves faring better. Their opponents, Southampton, have scored three goals in their last four away matches. In the last four game weeks, Alexander Arnold remains top amongst defenders for attempted assists, with 12, and joint top for big chances created, with three. No defender has taken more shots than Cancelo seven in that time, or landed as many as his four on target. Chelsea have conceded in each of the last three game weeks, with five goals against them in the last four. They've slipped down to 10th for expected goals conceded in that time. But their opponents' leads have not just four goals in the same period, with only Everton, Wolves and Burnley fashioning fewer than their five big chances. Mohamed Salah and Diogo Jota rank amongst the top two midfielders for expected goals and shots in the box over the last four game weeks. 
No player across all positions has recorded as many as just as seven big chances in that time. And completing the midfield alongside potential new signing Jared Bowen will be Brian M. Bomo, up against a Watford side that have shipped a league-high 10 goals in the last four game weeks. Only Leicester have recorded a higher expected goals conceded figure in that time. And no teammate has attempted as many as Mbomo's 10 shots in the same period. It's set to be a new look forward pairing, with Joshua King coming into the 11 to partner probable new signing Cristiano Ronaldo. Despite meetings with Man City and Chelsea in the last four game weeks, King remains top amongst forwards for expected goals in that time. Only Puki, Benteke and Ronaldo have fired more than his 10 shots in the box. Ronaldo has more or less matched Salah for goal threat over the last four game weeks, with each of them taking 15 shots and landing six on target, highlighting his appeal as a differential captaincy option. But the Egyptian has offered more creativity, carving out seven attempted assists compared to Ronaldo's three, and beating him 3-1 for big chances created. Aston Villa have improved since Steven Gerrard took charge, they've conceded just four goals in the last four game weeks, and ranked fourth best for expected goals conceded. Norwich, meanwhile, have shipped five goals and rank eighth for expected goals conceded in that time. It'll be interesting to see if either or both get their minutes managed in the Champions League midweek, but either way, it'll still be hard to take the Armand away from Salah. 